So you have your press conference scheduled for tomorrow regarding your client's legal dispute. Are you good from an ethics perspective and a defamation perspective? Hi everyone, my name is Wayne Pollock. I am an attorney who helps other attorneys and their clients ethically, strategically, and proactively engage the court of public opinion. In this video, what attorneys should be thinking about regarding the ethics and defamation concerns when giving a press conference. When attorneys hold a press conference for their client regarding a client's legal dispute, obviously attorneys are focused on being persuasive and they're focused on presenting their client's story in a way that will help influence the court of public opinion favorably on behalf of that client and hopefully help that client resolve their dispute as favorably as possible as soon as possible. But when attorneys are giving press conferences, they need to also be thinking about the ethics of what they're saying and any defamation concerns with what they're saying. So first things first, when it comes to ethics, and I'm not sure what jurisdiction that you're viewing me from, but generally speaking, when it comes to ethics, there are two main rules that attorneys should be thinking about when they're giving a press conference. The first one is ABA model rule 1-6, which concerns confidentiality, and this one's pretty easy. You're going to almost certainly need your client's approval to give a press conference and speak publicly about your client's case, even when you're talking about public information that's already out there in the form of your own legal filings or something else the client may have put out there uh, previously. Obviously, this usually isn't a big concern because if you're already giving a press conference and if your client's attending the press conference, presumably they've already signed off on it, but still, you wanna make sure you have explicit written approval from your client to hold the press conference and talk publicly about that client's case. The other rule is Rule 3.6, trial publicity. And this rule says that attorneys cannot make statements that they know or reasonably should know uh, will be made public and could have a substantial likelihood of materially prejudicing an adjudicative proceeding. The Supreme Court of the United States has said that what we're concerned about in that rule is prejudicing a jury. So really, most of the time, there isn't a concern that a press conference at the beginning of a lawsuit is going to impact a jury that's gonna be convened 12 months, 18 months, two years down the road. But the good news for attorneys is that there are two very helpful safe harbors in the ABA model rule and in that rule as it's been interpreted by most states. And that is attorneys can always talk about their claims, offenses, and defenses in a case, and they can always talk about the contents of a public record. So as long as you are talking about what you're alleging in your complaint, and you're talking about perhaps other public information, you're gonna be fine from an ethics perspective. What the concern is, is when attorneys start talking about information that might not be, in, that might not be admissible. In other words, they're talking about likely inadmissible information. The US Supreme Court has said, we don't want that coming in. The reason for Rule 3.6 is because we want to make sure that jurors, before they become jurors, don't hear information that they'll never be able to hear as a juror because that information won't be admissible. So again, you wanna to stick to the claims, offenses, and defenses that you're making in a case, as well as contents of a public record. If you wanna get into some more specifics, I advise you to look at the rule. I'm not gonna go through Rule 1, 3, uh, Rule 3.6 entirely uh, here in this video, but for more information, check out Rule 3.6 or its equivalent in your jurisdiction. From a defamation perspective, this is where attorneys often screw up because they forget that the litigation privilege to defamation doesn't extend to when you're talking publicly about your client's case. And what attorneys fail to do is they fail often to properly couch what they're saying as accusations or allegations. As an attorney, when you're talking about a legal dispute and you're sprinkling those magic words like, as we allege, as a complaint states, as we claim, our claims include, as we've stated in our papers, you are helping to distance yourself from a defamation claim because you are couching your accusations and allegations properly. And that's the key here, is you want to just make sure that when you are alleging something, you are actually saying it's an allegation and you're not just repeating uh, an allegation in a way that suggests that you're asserting it as a fact. Another way to help avoid defamation is by talking in sound bites. As I mentioned in another video, courts, generally speaking, across the country, again, I'm not sure what the law is in your jurisdiction, but generally speaking, when it comes to sound bites, uh, uh, 
courts will not tend to find a claim of defamation where there has been rhetorical hyperbole used. That's a term of art, and when courts talk about rhetorical hyperbole, they're talking about words and phrases that are so ridiculous and that are so um, over the top that no one could reasonably think that when the attorney was using that, that language, they were actually asserting facts. There are many things attorneys need to be thinking about when they hold a press conference regarding a client's legal dispute. They need to be thinking about how to persuasively tell their client's story. They need to be thinking about and anticipating questions from reporters in attendance. But they also need to be thinking about the ethics of what they're saying, and they also need to be thinking about how to avoid defaming an adversary or another party when they talk about the client's legal dispute. Again, when it comes to ethics, you want to be thinking about Rule 1-6, which is confidentiality. You want to be thinking about Rule 3-6, trial publicity. And when it comes to defamation, you want to make sure that you are couching all of your allegations as allegations. You're not asserting as fact certain allegations unless you know they're truthful. By keeping these ethical concerns and these defamation tips in mind, hopefully attorneys will be able to keep the press conference focused on their client and their client's legal dispute and not become part of the story themselves.